All right, all right. Uh, thank you very much for staying with us, guys. Welcome back, welcome back. I hope you guys are still enjoying the show. But above all, I hope you guys are learning a lot from what we are doing here. A big thank you to Sia as well as Philippa for assisting us with differential calculus. But a big shout out to Liberty for making this show possible. Without them, we wouldn't be able to bring you this awesome, awesome show, which is one of uh, another epic episode of Tenful Life. Remember, we are going to continue doing this even in the following weeks to help you prepare for your exams. But most importantly, tomorrow we won't be here. We will come back again on Thursday to give you another great episode of uh, Tenful Life. So so keep staying with us and keep sending us your questions on WhatsApp as well as on our Facebook line. Download our Tenfold app on your favorite app store. It's got great content that will help you in the meantime to prepare yourself so that when you come and watch us, there's actually a lot of things that you also have and you can ask relevant questions that will help build you. Remember this show is not an answering machine, but it's something that is there to assist you to make more sense of the concepts that you see at school. But most importantly, we want you guys to be able to be the best that you can ever be. So the only way we can be able to do this is by showing you these concepts when you ask us questions wherever you are stuck. So now we're going to write, uh, uh, jump into another question that was sent to us by one of you. This is a nice question from Neil. Let's go check out what this question says. Hi, Tenfo. Can you please solve this problem for me? All right. Thank you for that. It is actually a very nice question indeed. If you look at it, it looks very scary. I don't know about you, but just looking at it, it felt like, ooh, how are we even going to try and find the derivative of that using the power rule? It doesn't look like one of those simple questions that you get most of the time. This one looks a little bit challenging to some extent, but let's take a look at it and see what we can do to help you to make sense of it. If you look at the screen here, you will notice that it says to us, we need to determine dy over dx. Now that is just asking you to find the derivative. So we need to derive, right? We just need to derive this function y equals to the cube root of x to the power minus 1 plus 2 all over x cubed plus 2x to the power 4, where x is not 0 and where x is not minus half. Now those restrictions are important. They're just there to make the question valid because if x was 0, then you would either have division by 0 or a non-real question. So we're trying to avoid that. We give you these restrictions to assist you guys to be able to actually work and solve this question. We're asking you to find the derivative where this function exists. Now, if you go to this and try to make sense of it, we need to change and re-express every term you see here because we cannot be able to find a derivative if our function is not in the form coefficient base exponent. We need it to be in this form so that we can be able to say our derivative with respect to x is exponent times coefficient, which is n multiplied by a x to the power exponent minus 1, which is going to be your n minus 1. So now it is a mission for us to try and simplify it until it gets to at least this form of something x to the power of something else. Now, in order to work this thing out, I'm actually going to do something very interesting here. Yeah? We've got the cube root, right, of the part of x to the power minus 1 can be expressed as 1 over x plus 2. There's your plus 2, everything divided by. On the denominator, we don't have a problem. We've got x cubed plus 2x to the power of 4. Now, you guys are familiar with the concept that says um, what you do on the left-hand side of an equation, you need to also do on the right-hand side of the equation. Now, I'm dealing with a fraction. Whenever you're dealing with fraction, the same principle applies. What you do on the numerator must also apply on the denominator. So whatever you do on the numerator, you need to do on the denominator. So I'm going to multiply this fraction that is inside the radical sign here by something very interesting. I'm going to multiply it by x all over x. Let's see what will happen when I do this, because I'm actually trying to get rid of this 1 over x that you see inside there. Quickly, we will have the cube root of, when you multiply this x, right, this x that we have here, by 1 over x, it will actually cancel out, you will be left with 1, right? And when you multiply this x by the 2, you will basically be left with 2x, everything divided by, on the denominator, x times x cubed will give you x to the power of 4, and x times 2x to the power of 4 will basically give you 2x to the power of 5. Now, once I'm done doing that, I just removed the fraction 1 over x. That was actually what was driving my decision to multiply the numerator with x and the denominator with x. Once I have that, I'm now going to try and see, do I have common factors that I can factor out? And hopefully, something will look the same that will divide each other um, off. If you look closely at this function that we have, we now have on the denominator, there's a common factor. I still keep my cube root of x. I have on top 1 plus 2x 
divided by, only denominated as x to the 4 and x to the 5, which means 4x's are basically a common factor there. When I factor out x to the 4, I'm left with 1. When I factor out x to the 4 here, I'm left with 2 and only 1x. Now, something nice emerges there. I'm actually very happy to see that 1 plus 2x is a common factor that appears on the numerator and on the denominator as well. So we basically have the cube root of this 1 over x on the numerator can basically divide out this other 1 over x. So this will basically cancel that out, leaving us with what on the numerator? Just the 1 all over x to the power of 4. Now I'm happy to see this because it now becomes like a popular grade 11 question that you get in um, exponents when you're working with exponents. We can simplify this to the cube root of x to the power of minus 4, which will simplify it to x to the power of minus 4, everything raised to the power 1 over 3. And if you simplify further, what you end up with is that your y is basically x to the power negative 4 over 3. Now, I haven't even derived this. The whole question was just about simplifying it, applying your algebraic skills to see, are you able to simplify these kinds of things? It's a very nice question indeed. It helps you to be able to um, apply your grade 11 and your grade 10's work to, to try and see how you can actually fix it so that it is be, uh, it's going to be easy for you to derive it. So now I'm ready to find the derivative. Let's find the derivative. The derivative of this function, which is dy all over dx, is now going to be negative 4 over 3 times the coefficient 1, gives you negative 4 over 3, x to the power, we must subtract 1 from this, minus 4 over 3 minus 1 is going to be minus 7 all over 3. Right, if you simplify this further, remember we don't like working with negative exponents, so I'm going to leave the numerator untouched. On the denominator, I'm going to move my x to the power minus, of, um, minus 7 over 3 to the denominator. It's going to be x to the power 7 divided by 3, which is basically your dy all over dx. Fully uh, um, derived there, we are very happy to see what is going on there. So it is a very nice question indeed. It just helps you to apply your skills. So you see, algebra is a very powerful skill. From grade 8, grade 9, all the way until grade 12, you cannot survive mathematics without algebraic skills. And here you needed to understand a lot in terms of your laws of exponents to try and fix this. The important thing is when you are working with these questions, always make sure for you to find the derivative is always coefficient base exponent, coefficient base exponent. So thank you very much for actually uh, being with us. Uh, we really enjoyed being with you guys. I hope you learned a lot from our show today. We will be more than glad to see you again on Thursday. Keep sending us your questions. A big thank you to Liberty for sponsoring our show. Tomorrow we are not here. We will be with you next time. So thank you very much for staying with us. Till we meet again next time, it's bye-bye for now.